COVID-19 has brought to light the importance of having robust emergency care services in the country. Kenya Red Cross Training Institute has geared itself to ensure the country has enough paramedics and emergency medical technicians. On today's episode of Health Watch, we take you through the training that paramedics go through before they respond to any emergency call. Being a paramedic or an emergency medical technician, one will have to undergo vigorous training to ensure they can be able to save a life whenever they're supposed to or when duty calls. At Kenya Red Cross Training Institute, this is where all the magic happens. Here is where paramedics are trained to be the life savers that they are. Sami Kamanu, a trainer at Kenya Red Cross Training Institute, says they have equipped themselves in ensuring they offer quality education and training when it comes to pre-hospital care. So allow the patient uh, to be on the spine board first. So disentangle the feet. He says emergency care is a vital part of our healthcare system as it serves many by providing the right treatment at the right time. Pre-hospital care is basically uh, the provision of uh, a medical care outside a hospital, uh, hospital facility or any other established healthcare facility. So it is important to understand that uh, pre-hospital care is a crucial component uh, in terms of uh, care before a patient uh, is received uh, in the hospital facility. And, uh, and first, in, uh, the ischial strap. Remember that the patient uh, is safely secured on the spine board. In an emergency, it's not only the emergency medical transportation that are needed, but also the emergency medical services, either at the scene of incident or en route to a healthcare facility. We've seen now uh, uh, previously um, increase in uh, mortality and morbidity based on the fact that uh, patients were brought in the hospital when they are critical or when they were not in good shape or not stabilized. So pre-hospital care provides this initial care uh, so that um, the doctors or the receiving um, healthcare professional will continue with care. So we find that uh, pre-hospital care is very crucial uh, in terms of um, chain of survival. The trainings here start with physical classes, where the registered students will undergo vigorous training to ensure they have a grasp of what it takes to save a life, ranging from normal injuries, trauma, stroke, heart attacks, and many other medical emergencies. We need, after that, chest compressions. We need to give two rescue breaths. The students have to actively participate during these sessions and actively lead discussions which enhances better understanding. So you do not wait until the two minutes are over. You defibrate within the two minutes. After the class on how to deal with a heart attack patient, it's time for the students to simulate the whole session. Connect our patient to the machine, but before you do that, will get the vital signs. It's very important that you pick, you get to collect the vital signs. So you get the BP of the patient. We also need to um, take the respiratory rate and the temperature of the patient and the pulse. And in our case, we you may assess for pulse, Patrick. As he's doing that, I am connecting the patient to the monitor. Remember the qualities of high, I mean the chest compressions qualities. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, thirty-nine, thirty. 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 Give two rescue breaths. Two rescue breaths. Two rescue breaths. Do not compress. As that is happening, we analyze our rhythm. So which rhythm, this rhythm do we have here? Which this rhythm is this? It's a monomorphic ventricular tachycardia and in a patient who has no pulse. And therefore, we make a determination that these are patients who need defibrillation. So continue CPR. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. The cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, and prescribed medication will be given until the patient becomes conscious again. When a patient's heart stops beating, they are in a cardiac arrest. During a cardiac arrest, the heart cannot pump blood to the rest of the body, including the brain and lungs. 
Deaths can happen in minutes without treatment. CPR uses chest compressions to mimic how the heart pumps. These compressions help keep blood flowing throughout the body. CPR is an important skill that every emergency medical technician should learn as it reduces the chances of a person dying. No pulse present, so change compressors and continue with CPR. We have a refractory ventricular, pulseless ventricular tachycardia, so we continue with uh, defibrillation. So I'll prepare for the fourth shock. Okay, gel. Remember why we are applying this gel is one, we want to enhance the transmission of energy and two, we want to pre uh, prevent burning the patient or leaving marks on the patient's chest. Okay, fine. We are charging, charging. Okay. One, I'm clear. Two, you're clear. Three, we are all clear. We have the same rhythm. Shock delivered. Prepare epinephrine, one milligram. Administer as an IV push, followed by 20 ml of normal saline. When the paramedics can get a pulse from a patient, post cardiac arrest care is given, and every procedure that is taken when the patient is unconscious until they gain consciousness is well documented for the easy handover of the patient to the hospital. The students are also trained to do so. We're giving one rescue breath every six seconds. So you bug half squeeze, not the entire bag, yes. half squeeze, and then, yes, so Kenyatta one, Kenyatta two, Kenyatta three, Kenyatta four, Kenyatta five, Kenyatta six, bag, mm -hmm. Kenyatta one, Kenyatta two, Kenyatta three, Kenyatta four, Kenyatta five, Kenyatta six, bag. Emergencies can happen anywhere and at any time. The very nature of an emergency is unpredictable and can change in scope and impact. So we have assessed the airway and uh, we make a determination that our patient is not able to maintain a patent airway. So we've decided that the intervention we are going to give eh, is to intubate the patient. Yes. So assess the patient. After the class is over, it's time for action. In this type of work, one should always be ready for any type of emergency, be it an evacuation, car accident, or just a health complication. First step is inline stabilization of the patient. Uh, ensure that the head, neck, and spine is uh, in a neutral line. If a patient is found in an accident scene, a team of paramedics takes part in the rescue mission. First, they have to ensure the area is safe, confirm if the patient is conscious, then start the rescue mission. The ambulance is always on standby to facilitate the evacuation process by ensuring the patient arrives at the nearest health facility as soon as possible. One, two, three. Perfect. Now you can. To move the patient to the ambulance. One, two, three. Okay. Okay. So for Kenya Red Cross uh, Training Institute, we offer these courses and uh, it has different uh, categories. So it is important to understand uh, what these categories are. We have the lower level uh, up to the highest level. So we talk of um, a trained emergency medical technician and uh, a, pr a paramedic who is uh, trained uh, uh, to uh, continue with the care uh, from an EMT. To do all this, one ought to have taken various courses which the Kenya Red Cross Training Institute offers. An EMT uh, in full uh, stands for Emergency Medical Technician. This is uh, a trained healthcare professional who offers the initial care outside the hospital facility. The EMT is trained in conducting a safe assessment of the patient and provides the initial care that will allow the patient to be stabilized. So basically an EMT will offer the initial care in terms of life-threatening conditions and will quickly assess and take care of the patient. Where else a paramedic is also a trained healthcare professional who offers advanced critical care uh, and uh, continues with care 
up to uh, the receiving facility. Paramedic is a continuation of uh, EMT. So you realize uh, for you to become um, uh, a pre-hospital caregiver, uh, there are these cadres that uh, you may undergo. So if you, can, if you start with the EMT, then it means you will progress to paramedic, also referred to as paramedicine. So for us, we trained our EMTs and paramedics. We also have other cadres within the pre-hospital setting, such as uh, emergency medical dispatchers and emergency uh, medical responders. So all these falls under uh, emergency medical services. So for us is to ensure that uh, the trained paramedic and a trained EMT uh, offer, I mean, get quality trainings, which uh, will ultimately allow them to offer quality healthcare services to other patients. Emergency care services are needed not only during a pandemic like this current COVID-19, but also on a daily basis. In our trainings, we highly emphasize on um, personal protection. And when we talk of personal protection, we are looking at um, how an EMT or a paramedic uh, protects themselves uh, in terms of the minimum uh, body substance isolation. So that is highly emphasized. As you are aware, uh, COVID-19 is, um, is a respiratory uh, tract um, uh, disease. So what we are emphasizing here is it is very uh, important for the paramedic or the EMT to uh, protect themselves and, if need be, protect the patient. Monica Orero, the principal of Kenya Red Cross Training Institute, says since the institution was set up in 2010, tremendous milestones have been made as the institution boasts of supplying the country with emergency responders and technicians. The Kenya Red Cross Training Institute is a registered institution by TVET to offer competency-based learning for pre-hospital care workers. These are emergency medical technicians and paramedics. Our operations are also governed by the Ministry of Health. The Institute is also planning to expand its swings by launching more branches in the country and increase its reach in terms of training emergency health care workers. We've begun expansion. Our next branch that we're opening is Mombasa branch to be able to take care of that stretch from Mombasa to Nairobi, where we experience a lot of accidents in that area. But proudly we say our graduates are able to work everywhere in the country. We are working with the Ministry of Health to see a policy system where they can be able to be posted everywhere in the country so that there is response when there is need for an emergency. Emergency care services are important in minimizing injuries and preventing fatalities. For Health Watch, I am Bill.